All right, we'll call the uh, we'll call the meeting to order. Um, good evening. So we have um, a large um, slate of um, people tonight. So we'll do um, quick introductions. Um, Eric, if you could start, and then we'll start going. We'll go around the table real quickly. So why don't we? Actually, why don't we do all the introductions at once? Because I think pretty much everybody is all set. Uh, we have a couple new members, and we have a couple new uh, department chairs. So why don't we do introductions all at once so that we're all on the same page, uh, and then we can get started and not have to stop, you know, not have to stop and start. Does that make sense? OK. Eric, why don't you go ahead? Eric Capori, Community and Economic Development Director. Member. Chris Nobley, third year committee member. Uh, Karen Blake, uh, five year committee member. Bill Callahan, five year committee member. Jen Goldman, two year committee member. Tim Shearhart, four year. Thomas Ringo, eight year. I'm Vivian McNugget, who's my plus two. Uh, Lynn Bradley, the finance director. Okay, and then uh, Chief McCarthy. Uh, Bill McCarthy, five chief. Graham Rose, deputy five chief. Okay. Grace Santilli, assistant town manager. Services, Police Department. Charles Bailey, Chief. Jeff Coco, Emergency Management Director. Okay. Great. Uh, and do you get all of our names? Anybody? You want to? I think the name tags will give you away. Okay. All right. <laughs> 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 okay. Great. Uh, so, Mr. Four, if you could start with the community develop community development overview. Um, and just um, fire away, and we'll, um, we'll let you go for a while, and then we'll have some questions. Sure. I'll, I'll um, I guess, just give a brief overview again of the division, and maybe a couple highlights, and, and then just turn over specific questions. Is that right? Yeah, great. that's great. Um, so again, the Community and Economic Development Division uh, oversees uh, the land use boards, uh, uh, building, <coughs> planning, um, conservation, health, uh, as well as uh, Zoning Board of Appeals, and, um, and then the Stevens Estate. Um, th can't believe this year has flown by. It's been a pretty good year. I think, um, I would, one, we were getting the master plan, I'll get into that in a second, um, uh, firmly underway. Uh, as a matter of fact, I followed this meeting with Planning Board. We're meeting, we do have a consultant on board to do that. Uh, that process will be starting uh, immediately. Um, and that again will be, uh, in terms of the master plan, we're projecting around a 12 month prod, uh, time frame for that, uh, which is pretty aggressive. That's good news. Uh, and then uh, we follow that with a comprehensive zoning update, <clears throat> which we think is, first of all, long overdue in town. Uh, but we didn't want to do it without first setting the master plan. I think that, you know, that just makes sense, right? That mm -hmm. will follow, <clears throat> that will probably be done by uh, the fall of 2018. So another, say, six months on top of that. Um, the consultant is RKG is the main consultant. There are other uh, sub-consultants underneath it. They have uh, vast experience doing uh, master plans throughout the Commonwealth, and we're excited about that. The, uh, we also, uh, in conservation, updated the open space plan, so the town has a, an active open, uh, completely up-to-date open space plan. Um, that was a, that's a pretty involved process in and of itself, and uh, I'd like to commend Jen Hughes uh, leading that for us, the conservation administrator. So that was accepted by the state. Um, we are working with the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission, uh, which is about to, uh, we're doing something new uh, in the Commonwealth uh, for our housing production plan, which had expired. Um, but the Planning Commission, which basically represents communities from Andover, east to the uh, ocean. <clears throat> they will be doing a, a regional housing plan. The state's agreed with that. Uh, we've joined in on that, and we get like a chapter. And as, if we adopt that, and again, that's something the planning board probably adopt, um, then we will have an active housing production plan with the Commonwealth. We expect that process to be done uh, the end of this year. 
I think it has to be done by the end of this year. Uh, one in particular uh, thing that we've I think that's been highly successful is we have begun online permitting. We began about a year ago. It was April. And uh, we started with, believe it or not, the more complicated forms are plumbing, electrical, and gas. And we started with those. We've unveiled now building permits, and it's the different types of building permits. Um, actual building permit, uh, demolition, roofing, um, certificates of occupancy as well. Uh, sheet metal all those are now <coughs> online uh, we did the building we started at a couple weeks ago uh, kind of a soft opening on that and uh, but the good news for the public is they can go online and sign up it's basically put your email create a password and you have an account put your application in and it's all uh, feedback uh, immediately to you as either the homeowner or a, uh, a contractor and uh, I'd like to thank, uh, I know uh, different departments are now directly in line before we'd circulate or someone would have to circulate a permit to get sign off if it was required from, say, the fire department. Right. Um, now all that is integrated in the system. Uh, some from the fire department, for instance, or uh, uh, not the assessors, uh, tax collector's office. That's uh, something that we have a better... A handle on so if someone owes money to the town at, at a certain point we'll reject their permit say come pay you what you owe us and we'll give you a permit all that stuff now again the each department gets to review it sign off and the process is going pretty good uh, I think since April we've done a little roughly 2,000 uh, permits wow. yep and uh, for the most part you know we have our little issues but uh, we work through them and it's been highly successful we're happy about that and I, I'm told, uh, I'd like to give a particular shout out to um, Gene Enright, uh, planning director, uh, for really uh, setting all those up and, and doing a lot of work uh, up front to, so that process did go smooth. Um, I don't know if it's true, but uh, I believe we're one of the only communities and one of the few that actually do a lot of the big building, like the actual big building permit online. Some will have building permits that... Uh, Forget it, like roofing, some of the more simple ones. Uh, and certainly we do that as for commercial as well as residential. So we're particularly proud of that. And I think that's great. Uh, we will. Ahead of the curve. Yeah, a little bit. And we, and we will build on that already. I have health department saying, what about ours? And uh, that's next. That We think that'll actually be a little easier. So again, you know, the, the hope is uh, we'll basically have every department uh, online. Just so you know, conservation actually goes through the state system it's a, it's a state application um, and that's been online for years um, in terms of uh, I think uh, we've been focused on um, downtown in a big way trying to we were unsuccessful in our mass works application mm -hmm. but we're not certainly giving up on that we are still moving ahead with uh, undergrounding that's a long process the undergrounding of the utilities um, and uh, and some of the uh, street improvements we're looking at what's important for downtown I think you've seen or people have seen that the uh, Brad Street on Main has building is up um, you know they the owners have expressed that since the building has been up they've had you know it's one of those you build it and people start hate noticing it and they've had some interest uh, we they do have a tenant for the top floor I'll let them announce that uh, for half of the top floor and it's pretty good um, there's, yes, that's uh, leased, right. Yeah. Right. Now, the behind it, the 15 units also rental, that building's been up. Uh, I don't know if it's fully occupied, to tell you the truth, but that's been up. We're, of course, more excited about the commercial one right on Main Street. It looks pretty good. Um, uh, the east-west mill continues to flourish, and those, <coughs> the owners and the uh, people working on that have done a great job. I believe <coughs> in... Last year, they might have uh, leased out 100,000 square feet uh, on the, I don't know if that's on the West Mill side exclusively. Pretty much the East Mill, uh, it's, it's almost completely full. If not completely full, I think you kind of consider that. They are, I think, about to announce two big tenants or the, uh, uh, as well for what we call the Converse building. But um, they, they have market rate apartments there as well. So it's a 
great development, mixed use development. <coughs> I think another restaurant will be opening up in there pretty soon. So we, you know, we want to build off that, leverage off that, um, and I think we have three very good anchors in terms of first in Maine, the uh, Messina's uh, 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 strip mall, and and then uh, again now Brad Street in Maine and East West Mill. So I'll f focus on that. It, you know, if I, if I want to open it up, I don't want to take too much time. Budgets yeah, yeah. I don't know if they want to do it as did, if you want to do each <coughs> budget individually, or I don't know I how you want to do it. Um, well, I'd I just have a couple questions. I have a couple questions on your the, um, on community and economic development. Community yep. and economic development. Um, you want to go first, then? Okay. Um, so I saw that there's a bunch of for for FY18. Um, there's a bunch of marketing initiatives. Um, I imagine the one with the Merrimack Valley is kind of supported by um, Chamber of Commerce type money or some other things like that. The uh, Merrimack Valley Planning Commission, that was actually, there was a grant from the state uh, part of the compact program right. that came through North Andover. Uh, so we've uh, helped, but, but the work was, the project itself was managed of, uh, right. by the Planning Commission, but we were at more at the table than other communities because the money came through us as right. well. But it was state uh, grant money. No, I remember that, and that was that's good. And then mm -hmm. I saw that we were working on like a, a North Andrews specific marketing campaign. Right. And so, so my question was just: Do you need? Do you have the expertise in house? Do you need to go out and get any consultants or? Uh, we would probably go out and get consultants. Would uh, that process just so you know? We want to build that off of the regional mm -hmm. a little more. Um, there has been a couple little things. I, um, the town manager's office, in particular, I think you see some uh, there's some advertisement at the airport, for instance. You know, some of the things that they could get off immediately. Uh, but the <clears throat> so the first phase of that marketing program was a logo tagline uh, for the Merrimack Valley region, uh, even though. We just, you know, it's the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission, and it's really focused, again, from Andover East, even though right. the rest of the valley uh, <laughs> comes, you know, it's always part of the question. But uh, so they've approved a logo. They're unveiling that um, and rolling that out. So now we're entering, about to enter the second phase, which is to actually put um, the marketing materials together. And I think we want to see that and then see how we can link to that, build off that. But, yeah. Okay. So, let me, if I could summarize, mm -hmm. then, basically, you don't think you need any outside marketing expertise, or you don't know that until you see what the the Merrimack. I anticipate brings. we will need some outside. Oh, and uh, is that assistance. built into the budget? Yeah, it's uh, there's a little money in uh, that I think you'll see in outside professional services, but not much really. Yeah, it, yeah it's more for next this year. year. But it will be right. more right. the following year that right. I probably because I see a drop. This year it bumped yeah. up for the master plan monies. Mm -hmm. Next year. Right, it's and there's okay. still some for the balance of the master plan. Yeah. Okay. So even though there's a substantial drop, there's something built in for yes. that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The drops are due to the not no longer being at sixteen hundred dollars square and having to pay the utilities, the repairs and maintenance, and the lease payments. Got it. So that was the outside that's a professional. Jump. Thank no, you. No, I'm sorry. Well, that's what I'm. That's and then we don't have the overall. lease, the twenty-eight thousand down the bottom. Right. Okay, the, I'm the, looking at outside pro professional right. services yep. of twenty-nine five mm -hmm. drop. Right. That so was the so the uh, master plan uh, one. I think came in a little. We yes. got a good deal. Uh, okay. You know, most of that. Uh, thank it. you, Ray. Okay. Um, but yeah, most of that was worked in the front end. Okay. The vast, let's say, two thirds of it, or so, okay. uh, was yeah. paid for this current fiscal year. That's what the big drop off is. Okay. Um, and then my only other question, we can I guess ask all the questions. Mm -hmm. You know, in the right department, mm -hmm. but with the with the proposal, you know, for the marijuana cultivation fa uh, facility, what part of your department is kind of handling that, and who's the point so, person on that? Um, well, at this point, uh, it was a citizens' petition. Uh, so planning has actually been reviewing. You know, the way we look at it is trying to uh, see what it means to the surrounding. The you know, let's say the surrounding properties. Uh, there, I would anticipate they're going to have some conversation with planning board, uh, but it's basically the planning department. Okay. You know, 
we're, we're just kind of looking at the actual proposal, the language, the map that they're proposing, how, you know, making sure that it would all, if it passes, would uh, go smoothly. <coughs> I'm all, um, those are my questions. Thanks. Um, the permit process, which is great, and mm -hmm. love that. Um, I had to go through that with my contractors. The question is, will there be a new move for 2018 to do scheduling online as well, or will it only be about payments and approvals? Scheduling, you mean for inspections and things? Um, so actually, there are, I believe, uh, I think the electrical inspectors better at that um, and we've been focusing on the permits but the program does allow you work the inspections and we can monitor those as well okay. uh, the individual inspectors um, I'm going to be purchasing at least to give it uh, a try with the building commissioner um, the tablet to go out and you know have it out in, in, in real time but yes okay. I can answer your question yes Okay. And on the master plan and zoning bylaw review processes, is part of that effort for 2018 to form the resident committee, or has that already been done and accomplished? <clears throat> so, no. Uh, planning board, uh, so back up a little. Master planning process by statute is under the planning board. And uh, the planning board, as so we've had an interest, uh, some people have expressed an interest, and we've received their uh, letters of interest and resumes. Uh, we have not yet gone over those because the planning board wanted to get first some more input from the actual consultant as to what they should be looking for, what we should be looking for in terms of the breadth of experience and all that. I anticipate that first meeting of going over those um, next week. I was trying to get it in this week because tonight, again, they're meeting with the, uh, the consultant. Um, that should go quickly. Okay, I would but that's hope. under planning, so I'm getting that. Okay. Yeah, the, okay, that's, that's part out. of it. Okay, um, and going back to 2017, just a couple of questions. Um, this, the major development along 114 corridor to include utilization of the National Training Center, the Watts, and the offices at Bacon Joy. I'm just wondering, oh, yeah. you, you mentioned development and utilization. I have no idea what happened there. Is that, did that tr does that translate into increased business revenue? Is it just, was it empty space? No, so uh, the, the training center you're talking about itself? Yes. So Watts Water, which is one of our largest mm -hmm. employers in town, uh, they opened up a national training center. So for their, people using their products can come in and they, it's their training center. So oh, it's theirs. Yes, so there is no extra not, revenue with right. that. Okay. Um, and then the Berry Farms, is that almost full? So we now have a, a head count on adults and children? Um, yeah, and I'm not certain the, the, the head count uh, uh, on the children, I think, the school department. It is almost full. The last building, uh, they've scheduled the final inspection from building to get the CO, the uh, certificate of occupancy. Um, the other buildings have theirs. Okay. And, yeah, so that's essentially that product's, uh, project's pretty much done. Uh, there are some checklist items and, and all that stuff. The, uh, you know, we haven't closed it out completely. And then I have one more, but I have to understand why I wrote this. Um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> the solar. So mm -hmm. the solar installation, is that a revenue generating activity? So basically where the solar panels lie, they're paying taxes for the use? Well, they entered uh, a pilot payment in lieu of taxes with the town. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. departments I, I went through them um, I'm always impressed by the way I would like to say that I'm very impressed with the Conservation Committee with their write-up uh, <laughs> with the detail that they put in and I comb through I look at I went back three years and I looked at what they said they were gonna do in 16 and mm -hmm. it was done in seven in the 17 budget and what they said they were gonna do in the 17 budget was done for the 18 budget so, um, you know, I, I think they deserve to be commended. Um, yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree. Jen does a great job. Also, I w will announce Heidi Gaffney was the other uh, uh, conservation agent. She took a job. We are now in the process of going to uh, fill that position. She got a, she's the 
number, uh, the agent for Topsfield, I oh, believe. Okay. So that just happened about a month ago. But she did a great job as well. Um, any of the other departments? Um, planning seemed, planning and zoning board of appeals pretty, yep. relatively speaking, we're talking kind of small potatoes on the, on the fun side, but everything looked to be pretty mm -hmm. good. Uh, so anything else before, I think we should talk about the student's estate because that's unique <laughs> for our town. Year for open space development next to, next to Drummond. Whatever happened with that was, and did I know money was set aside for it at town meeting? Did anything ever happen? Yeah, you talking yeah. that went through the CPC, uh, the conservation, right? Conservation. Yeah, no, did it yeah, go through CPC. conservation? I mean, excuse me, uh, uh, preservation. Community preservation. Community preservation. Yeah. Okay. And they okay. did not. The sale did not get completed. Yeah, so. I didn't think I I'd been looking for it, but I just yeah. okay. So now that's. Hmm. I and gotta get shut down. down. They're no longer pursuing that. For right. There's for right now. Right now. Yeah, I don't right. believe they. They're not it's on not the application be action for this year. year. Right. No. Hmm. Okay. Anything else before we hit the um, Stevens Estate? Okay. So the Stevens Estate is on page um, two eleven. And I guess as I looked at the Stevens estate, I was struck by the fact that it, it's kind of a good news story. So if you could talk a little bit about the revenue, because it seems like we're up in a couple expense categories, but they're mm -hmm. related to the fact that more is going on there. So, mm -hmm. right. you know, it's, it's money spent because we're generating revenue. But if we could do a recap on kind of where we are. Sure. I think um, out of the last uh, few years, uh, we've been able uh, – to put some monies back into the estate because of the success. You're right, a lot of the line items, it gets a little bit challenging because we try and project so that we don't get caught short, you know, on a budget that's been approved in May and then the following uh, June, we, we're, uh, because of success, our alcohol, uh, into, you know, expenses gone up, our utilities expenses have gone up because of more events, but we got to cover that. We've been able, I think, to get a better handle of that. Um, so I, I will say, uh, you know, the number of events, uh, again, mostly weddings. Uh, I think uh, the director, Joanna Willett, and Gail Lull up there have done an exceptional job of, uh, uh, with short staff, uh, really uh, managing all the events there and getting them. But um, in the middle of all that, we were able to, with community preservation match funds, um, start some long overdue uh, uh, renovations. Uh, we did the, we started with the, what we call the bride's bathroom. And for those uh, mm -hmm. familiar with this state, uh, it's where the bride will kind of, on the second floor, hang out. Um, you know, we, we maintain the integrity of the, the bath, the historical part of the bathroom, but, you know, we stripped the paint off the floor that somehow these wooden floors were painted at one point. Uh, ref Furbished uh, a lot of the um, wood, and and try to keep it again in 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 line with the uh, nature of the estate. Um, but that project has been completed. We are just finishing up um, doing what we call the groom's bathroom <laughs> and uh, a room across. So two more bathrooms up there. Again, we have to focus on those that are actually historical. You know that were have always been bathrooms. Um, and I think we'll be able to do those two for basically the same amount of money as the one in the bride's room. But again, th that hopefully will be happening over the next uh, couple months and it shouldn't take all that long. So we're able, you know, the, the biggest challenge with the Stevens estate is um, uh, being able to do uh, those long overdue big projects. And uh, for a long time, the community preservation was uh, a great source for that. But now we're being a little more uh, self, uh, uh, you know, controlling that ourselves through revenue. And I think it's been part of the uh, capital improvement plan. Yep. Um, and we actually, I think we've added, if you look on a capital purchases, we put right. in 15000 for those um, projects that 
don't fall under uh, a capital improvement, but um, we're going to be updating the uh, its limited amount to how much uh, of the house actually has air conditioning, but we're doing a new air conditioning uh, for the ballroom and the room off of that. Um, that should be happening pretty soon as well. That doesn't, that's not a capital improvement like that. Um, for tax purposes, is that what we're doing? No, well, uh, you can. Well, if you look within the budget, we have the transfer into capital. We're using the retained earnings, what you would call retained earnings in a, in a business, to support and pay for all of that. So we're not financing anything, and, right. and we're raising the revenue to do that. Got it. Yep. Right. Yep. So that's $110,000 to uh, the to bottom line, basically plowed back into the biz into the into so renovations. It's carrying Absolutely. itself entirely, and okay. none of these things have to be uh, go out for any kind of uh, borrowing. Correct. Okay. And if you if you were to look over the past three years, I mean, the revenue has gone up from FY um, fourteen of three hundred and thirty-seven thousand yeah. up to fifteen had four hundred eighty-three, and two thousand sixteen we had five hundred twenty-six. Yeah. And we're expecting to reach that again, if not more, this year. So. Okay. So so this pot is on right. its bottom. That's correct. Okay. And the renovations are helping because the events are now getting bigger and that the, the mm -hmm. building is getting better and improved and there's more people want to go there now. So it, and the more business, the, right, exactly. So. Uh, I saw something too on a, I saw a bid form come out from the town on the, something to do with the alcohol and um, are we looking to? Oh, so uh, one thing we are looking for in terms of uh, is, hmm. is uh, putting the bar under a management um, so we're not managing the cash we're not um, uh, directly handling during the event the sales and all that right. alcohol. And that's a lot on my recommendations with the town manager because of the fact that we shouldn't be handling as much cash as they handle on the weekends right okay putting somebody responsible to handle all the money that comes in for the night for a cash bar no way to get it to the bank no security to get us to the bank. So um, we, it opens us up for fraudulent activity. Not that any is happening, but it's a possibility. If we can get out of the cash business and get a commission from somebody that's up there running the bar, so they'd pay us a percentage of whatever amount that they sell. Right. And that's where we get the earnings from that. And then that would drop the line within the budget for the liquor because we wouldn't have to purchase the liquor. Right. We have to, you know, inventory it and monitor it and make sure that, you know, that people aren't over pouring and be that responsible for all of that. Right. Because it's no, I think not, that's a, we a not, good move. We shouldn't be in that type of a business. Right. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. So. Would they Good. then assume the liability for the yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yeah. And they would have carry the liquor license and all right. of that. Right. Yep. Okay. Great. Um, Anything else? Comments similar to what you made relative to the conservation department. There are some things in here, such as the state has invested significantly in the relationship it has with vendors and event partners. I look at that as a very good, solid, strategic kind of thinking and, and purpose mm -hmm. that um, is helping the Stevens estate make it. Definitely. Right, so. yeah. Great, thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good, night. good night. Thanks. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Hello, Director. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Very well, thank you. Good, good. Okay. So we are ready. I'm just finding the page here. Page 151. 151, okay. Okay, um, take it away. We're uh, with the Emergency Management Department in the town of North Andover, third branch for public safety. Uh, we usually don't go into effect until you hear a state of emergency declared. The rest of the time, we are an ancillary support to the other public safety agencies as needed. Uh, that's basically our function. We're a volunteer organization. I am the only paid employee there, so to speak. I receive a stipend. Uh, we have about 15 currently uh, volunteers in our organization uh, between the operations division and the communications division. 
and uh, they're all good people. They really like to do for their town, and we support them through the fact that we give them training, uniforms, etc. We maintain a vehicle. Uh, we currently house our vehicle up at the Stevens Estate in the garage there, and we're currently housing our equipment there as well. Great. That's basically it in a nutshell. Okay. Mm. All right. Um, so I had a couple questions. Mm -hmm. So you had a capital outlay, outlay in, um, in 2017. Um, $7,500. Mm -hmm. so I was just wondering what you used it on. And we used that for our vehicle. Uh, we received a new vehicle when the fire department retired their ambulance. That mm -hmm. became our emergency operations vehicle. Okay. We had to convert that into something that was usable to our effect. Okay. And most of that capital outlay went into that vehicle as well as uh, a little bit went into some radio equipment that went into it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's why that one-time charge was on there, and now that's basically uh, up and functioning for the okay. most part. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, and then um, on the, I noticed on the uniforms, mm -hmm. um, we're talking about 15 people. Mm -hmm. What? It costs approximately $2,000 per individual to outfit okay. them. Uh, unlike other departments where we have a volunteer organization, right. uh, we outfit them completely versus having it come out of their pocket. Mm -hmm. Everything from uh, an all-weather jacket uh, that meets the ANSI codes with the reflectives, uh, a lighter weather jacket, uh, shirts, short sleeve and long sleeve polo shirts, uh, two different types of pants, uh, pairs of shorts as well, boots, long boots, short boots, uh, boots that we can walk into chemicals with that go up to basically our knees, etc., uh, etc., et uh, hats, gloves, it goes okay. on and on, uh, belts, etc., uh, so that's where that cost comes in. We currently have two new individuals who are on board right. uh, that we have partially outfitted that we have to continue that process with, as well as continue, for example, uh, the boots that we had. Right. They only have so much service life, right. and uh, they have to be replaced every so many years to be sure they're impervious to chemicals, et cetera. And that's part of the expenses there. Okay. And then, um, so when this compares to, like, the the other public safety departments, they get a uniform allowance? That's correct. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's, that's, why, that's why I was looking. I was saying how come uniforms on one side is relatively mm -hmm. low and uniform for emergency management? Well, of course, the, the two other public safety departments are under union contracts. Right, so they get a stipend. The down. uniform allowance. Right, mm -hmm. okay. All right, that, that makes sense. And then I guess at the end of the day, I've been on the committee for five years, and I've seen Jeff probably three or four times. Mm -hmm. You've seen him more than I have. Uh, and lucky you. <laughs> and um, he's kind of like the itinerant department, where like he, you know, so he's got a garage up at the Stevens Estate still. Mm -hmm. How is the? Is it solid? Do you need a new garage? Can we? Ultimately, uh, we're we're happy being there. It could be better. Mm -hmm. uh, we wish that uh, the doors were a little wider. Uh, the Steve uh, Foster went up there after one of the garage doors actually fell off on top of our vehicle at one point, the old slide doors that were there. Uh, we had that, Andrew authorized that to be replaced. We had new roll-up door put on. Uh, we currently have to fold our mirrors in on our vehicle to get it into the garage, which mm -hmm. makes it difficult judging the back wall. <laughs> right. Uh, but along those lines, it's, it's serviceable, let's put it that way. Okay. Uh, the building itself isn't in the best of shape. There's right. a lot of rot on the roof and the eaves, etc. cetera. Uh, we've had raccoons in there that have literally carried around 25-pound fire extinguishers. Mm -hmm. I'd like to put a uniform on them and get them on board <laughs> because that's more than my guys pick up. Uh, but, uh, I mean, other than that, we have issues there, but it is serviceable. Right. It's not ideal. Mm -hmm. The uh, current electrical in there is barely minimum to be able to support. Mm -hmm. If we wanted to expand in any way, we really couldn't. We have no heat source in there. We have no sanitary facilities in there. Right. Uh, that's basically what Yeah, I mean, is. I guess, you know, I guess it's something we should be thinking about yeah. as, a, as a town. Like, is yeah. that the right place? You know, is that yeah. – I don't know if the outbuildings are under historic sort of umbrella that would say you can do X, Y, but you can't do Z. Or if, you know, if there's another spot somewhere well, again, in town. An historic building, if you do historic restoration, it's – meant to be historic restoration. Right. What we're doing at Stevens State. 
to outfit the garage to accommodate exactly. emergency That's what I'm management saying. isn't considered historic restoration. No, no. I 100% get that. So my question is, yeah. Uh, we've considered different locations and they, you know, different things have been contemplated and up to this point, that's the best location mm -hmm. we've been able to ascertain. What about the town farm? There's a couple outbuildings there behind the fields. That's exactly right. There's a couple of outbuildings behind the field, and that's and that's probably those are probably in worse shape than the uh, right. Than, but I'm than, just than saying, the like, garage at the Stevens right. Estate. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but my but my but my point is like this seems like a this seems like a fa fairly solvable Je problem. Je solvable problem. Like well, we I'm not could... sure it's a, I'm not sure it's a problem. Well, it's, a, it's an issue. issue. Yeah. It's an issue. issue. And Jeff does very well in bringing it to the attention of the town administration right. multiple times a year right. and, and uh, for many years, and we weigh it against all, everything right. else that needs to be done, and that's how the decisions are made. Right. So in other words, so could he, could he, scraps, excuse me? <laughs> yeah, we, it's $28,000. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I could just say something here. Uh, this, this is my 39th year in emergency right. management. And I have to say, under the current administration, if you will, in town hall, we have received more consideration and right. more people have tried to, town manager, Ray, et cetera, mm. have really tried stepping up to the plate to try and solve some of our issues. In the past, it's fallen on deaf ears. Right. And uh, we have made gains. Are they ideal? Not by any stretch of the imagination. But we are far better off than we were in the right, past. Right, right. I mean, I guess my only point is, if there's a process, there's a capital budgeting process, you do a needs assessment and you put, put things in, but I haven't ever seen a, a project. So mm. do you, I haven't ever seen a project, so how could we help you get a project in the queue? I'm not saying fund the project because that's not our job at all. Emergency, our job is to emergency, say like... Emergency management will be considered every time we make decisions. They do. And, right, but... And the decisions happen the way they need to happen. Right, right, but in other words, is he getting... Is the... Is there... There's so I'm just saying, no, like in my no, business, in my business, so, in, my, in our business, there's only so much of the pie. Oh yeah, I agree. And the pie has to be 100% agree. We, 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 I'm just saying that is he, is the request for pie. So like in my business, I have a capital project. So I say, hey, I have this proposed capital project. I put together an ROI. I put together an estimate, and I I give it to you because you're my boss. And I say, here's my request. And you're going to go through the process and where you score Jeff, them all. And Jeff constantly makes those requests. Right. And, and in terms of other projects and other considerations, that's how the decisions are made. Right. And, and but I've never seen it on a, I've never seen it as a line item uh, out of the possible you've projects. Never, you've never seen it on the five-year plan. That's correct. Right. To be honest with you, if, for example, there was a suitable parcel somewhere right. that was town property that would fit our needs, et cetera, that would have been considered, is Ray stated right now, basically, we're at the best place we can be right. for what is available. So let me just ask you a question. Um, the, when the chiefs were talking about the new radio uh, that, uh, that the infrastructure is, yeah. does that tie in with where? where mm -hmm. so, yeah. you're, so you're getting some new technology in the next year, right. year and a half. Right. Plus, also, in fact, you might recall from uh, our last meeting. At the time, we were in the process of purchasing some new sophisticated radios yeah. that have multiple spectrums in them where we can now tie in, right. as they do in dispatch, the state police, the DPW, right. the right. police and fire, all through one portable as well, right. and have them multi-band communication through these units. And that's another reason why I increased my, my radio up a little more, because I'd like to get another one of those units. In, they're in, terms, in terms of equipment, emergency management is state, mm -hmm. state yeah. of the art. We well, have so received no, their requests, et cetera. Right. In terms of, in terms of a facility, about, yes, they've been wanting. I guess I was thinking about it in terms of, you know, we're trying to, we've, we've gotten to the point as, as a community where we're looking at long-term uh, investments in terms of what the maintenance of, what the care of, you know, I'm thinking, for instance, the police station, right, putting the car part up because we have assets mm -hmm. there and we want to take care of that. So I just wonder whether that's a factor as we... Uh, invest more in this technology, well, that's another push for this consideration. And I can tell you that emergency management was considered under Facilities Master Plan 1 and just didn't make the cut as other projects didn't make right. the cut. Mm -hmm. and, and similarly, they'll be considered under Facility Master Plan 2. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I mean, we don't want a Taj Mahal. We just like a nice little, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We want a Taj, a Taj roof. <laughs> just a roof. <laughs> so, we're good. Okay. 
Uh, anything else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Yeah, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you define as an uh, emergency? And, and an emergency? Yeah. Uh, from uh, from our standpoint, uh, it can be classified in several ways. Uh, we can have what's called a limited state of emergency, a local limited state of emergency. An example of that would be, for example, a number of years ago when we had the trail derailment, der derailment down on Sutton Street. It's any anytime you have an issue that goes beyond the, the scope and capabilities of your community and you may require outside resources. We are basically the liaison between our municipal, public safety, state and federal. So that way if there are additional resources that need to be brought in, we are able to. For example, if we have uh, flooding. flooding in the town and others don't, we have the ability to declare a local state of emergency. I in turn then would notify the state, the state in turn would notify the federal government, and then at that point I would be communicating directly with the federal government to see if we qualify for aid to reimburse. That way we can re reimburse our equipment costs and our manpower. So uh, some of it is even simpler, like last Tuesday snowstorm. Mm -hmm. yeah. On Wednesday, part of the community lost power. Mm -hmm. We had a, a number of um, senior citizen residences that are uh, housing that did not have electricity. We mobilized um, the senior center to accommodate them. Jeff's crew assisted with that process. So it, it's a varying degree. Thank you. So you have to tie up with, uh, in certain situations with the police and the fire. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when the, the, way, the way it theoretically works is that uh, when a state of emergency is declared, and it could be a gubernatorial, which would be a state or a federal, from that point on, we theoretically become the lead agency. Mm -hmm. Does that mean we tell the police and fire what to do? Absolutely not. Uh, it's just that we are the resource that we, under the incident command or NIM system, that we would channel the information back to the state and federal agencies that are looking to support us, and that's what that's all about. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. I think we're all set. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. seeing you and Good all your service. All you. Thank okay. Um, all right, who's next on the agenda? Um, Chief Chief Gray, who's up next? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we're on page uh, 141 for the police department. Welcome, Chief Gray. Good Thank to see you, you again. Um, just a quick snippet. Um, as you can see with the uh, mission, uh, the, the changes we've made this year, we have a lot of things going on. Um, we spoke about the capital plan a few weeks ago about some ongoing projects we want to tackle. Um, there's also... Um, issues with question four now we're, we're dealing with. There's issues with um, crime rates and, and opioid epidemic and whatnot. So we kind of got a, a real good grasp on what's going on around not only the state but locally in North Andover. Great. Okay, I went through and, and looked at a couple things. Um, looked at a couple things like over the past couple of years. Um, and so I had a few things to kind of st that I've seen through a couple budgets. So are the LED bars done on all the on the cars? I Almost. Saw that. We Almost. have a couple more. We have three more cruises coming out in this budget, and we've kind of um, encapsulated not only the LED bars, the new siren packages, the computers, uh, and radar units in to upgrade everything, so it's just a single cost over the course. Uh, the, the life of the computers now is three years, which is right. pretty much the life of a cruiser. Mm -hmm. right. So we're going to start putting all that together, and that way it's just a, a fixed cost. Right. So that's why some of them are not done, because you're kind of... Yeah, if you, see the, if you see the fleet, you'll see different light bars on them, yeah. different siren packages. Some of those siren packages are 15, 16 years old. Okay. And right. we cars are designed now, they can't hear them. So we had to upgrade and get the, the louder ones, the brighter lights and everything. So it's been very successful. Okay. Just a quick point of reference for, especially for some of the new members who may not realize this, Chief Gray was appointed July 1st, right. 2016. Mm -hmm. So this is his first budget. Right. So if you have questions going back to a previous budget, right. please keep that in mind. Yeah. Same with yeah. Chief McCarthy. Right, right. Um, just, good. Just, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I would say... Uh, <laughs> And 
And then... Um, Good job to protect them, Tim. <laughs> right, right. And then I'd say another thing I noticed was, um, uh, in terms of training, I noticed two different things. Yes. So interdepartmental training with the, with the fire department, and then I noticed that there was an initiative started in 2016. Like, but you didn't just fall off the turnip truck. You've been here the whole time. So, I mean, you've been in the department. Um, we also noticed that there was a, um, an effort to get more in-house training, so to have like, more training available on the force. So how have those initiatives worked over the past so year or so? So I'll address the in-house training first of all. The, the police training is mandated through the Mass Criminal Justice Training Council, and they basically dictate to us an unfunded mandate, if you will. You will have 40 hours of training. It will encapsulate these particular blocks, whether it's addiction awareness, opioid abuse, it's going to be Alzheimer's, um, along with legal updates, firearms, CPR, first responder, and, and the likes. So what happens is they tell us what we have to train on, and we have to send people out to become instructors to teach not only in-house, but we teach our reserves, we teach our, our specials, mm -hmm. and we also work with other departments. Uh, like an example is Andover. We'll train with them and get the same sort of give and take, if you will, um, with having one instructor being able to teach multiple uh, officers. As far as the interdepartmental training goes, Chief McCarthy and I have been doing this since 2011. 11. And we've been doing this with great success. This involves getting police and fire uh, mostly to schools and really sort of hammer down this new Alice program. We brought it in there, not only dealing with like intruders, but we're dealing with gas leaks like we had at the middle school two years ago mm -hmm. or um, any sort of critical incident where we're going to deal with mental health issues and whatnot. And by getting both police and fire working together, we actually, and I'll brag a little bit, we kind of led the way with this because we see other departments doing it now. We've been doing this for six, seven years. Great. Can you tell me uh, just a little bit about the uh, Massachusetts Criminal Justice Training Council? What is it? Is it a state agency? Is it a nonprofit agency? What is it who is setting the standards here? So the Massachusetts Criminal Justice Training Council is a state agency headed by a man named Daniel Zinkovich who is in charge of all police training in the state of Massachusetts. That incorporates academy training, recruit level training, all the way through reserve veteran officer in-service training, along with specialized training, such as um, anyone in getting involved with the new opioid epidemic or uh, the marijuana epidemic, specialized training and learning how to deal with the new question four mandates and whatnot, um, special training in with juvenile issues, with elderly issues. There's a whole gamut of things that we're involved in, and the training council mandates certain hours of mandatory training, 40 hours a week for, per officer, and then anything above and beyond is what whatever the department wants to get into. So they give you unfunded mandates? It's, 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 it's a standard which by all Massachusetts Police Departments need to abide by. So as Chief Gray referred to, when a recruit goes to one of the regional academies, they dictate what the 20 to 26 weeks, what it will incorporate. So many hours of X, so many hours of Y, so many hours of Z. For, for officers on the job beyond one year, they mandate what will be required of the 40 hours certification every year. If you don't, if you, Departments have never challenged it, but if you don't meet those requirements, you could be removed as a police officer legally by the law. It's never gone that far because all departments abide by the by the mandates. Mm -hmm. Is this a certification? Well, it, it, it yeah, a police officer is basically certified, has to graduate a recruit academy, and then every year must complete the forty hours of training. So is the it's like continuing at yeah. No, Nemlec is different. Nemlec Nemlec is a regional police. Um, uh, it's it's how many departments? Forty six. Forty six departments that regional. That, that it's a regional which respond to certain uh, incidences or whatever. Basically, it's a mutual aid to each other. That's different than the Mass Training Council. Well, I see on this uh, list of um, on page uh, one forty three. That's the assessment. Uh, that join Nemlec. Yeah, Nemlec is making assessments. I no, no, no. That's that's a regional police force. Like uh, Mr. Santo said, we pay into that every year, and we we are given resources if need be. For example, if there's a critical incident and we need to get numerous officers here to do a, a search, hundreds of officers, we can do that. You saw it in Burlington um, recently. Peabody had a SWAT team call out. We have access to SWAT if we need. We had it on Mass Ave twice where we had to have a SWAT team come down. By paying into NEMLEC, we have those resources available to us. Canine accident reconstruction, that's a separate entity from training. So this is this assessment is actually a do, dues for correct. this organization yeah. and not correct. an assessment in that's the correct. 
municipal and legal each department term. department has right. to uh, 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 dedicate so many officers to the regional group. And again, tell me who's in this regional group? Uh, what, what is the territory? Middlesex and Essex County, for the most part, just about every department. I Anywhere see. down from Groton, okay. Dunstable, all the way up to Manchester by the sea. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Following training? Yes, sir. Two years in a row, uh, we've got training, increased training for officers, identifying potential terror attacks. Yes. And it just, uh, did you have training, have you had training this year in planning for next year, or have you not had training for the terror attacks? Sure. No, we've, we've had solid, ongoing, verifiable, realistic training. And we're continuing doing that because, again, San Bernardino is all in everyone's mind. I agree. So we're going to, we, we, it's not just a one time thing. It's, we do firearms every year. We're training for it. I'm glad it's on the list. Thanks. So, so is, this, um, is this training uh, under the training, the, uh, yes. which aegis? Which outfit is doing? This, this is our own training. It's not this is your own in-house training. By Mass Girl, this is training okay, so who do we use for this training? What do you mean? I mean, who who trains who trains the trainers? Um, who determines what is and what isn't? Um, the curriculum. Yeah, defining what is this? We this group of things oh. happened. Is this a terror attack, uh, or is it something else? Who makes that? Who teaches how to make that distinction? Right now, there's two officers over in Andover that have gone through the certification course that we're working with. But there's also, in, um, for example, we do firearms training. The firearms instructors are teaching what to see, what not to see, you know, potential issues with um, you know, gunfire attacks and whatnot. We're teaching it through in-house training with uh, officers that have been involved in critical incidents and understand what transpires. So... Yes. Are we paying Andover on those two? Actors? We don't really pay Andover. If, if the ones you're about? seeing, the, I, I think the one you meant to say was the instructors we, we outsource are from like um, Criminal Justice Training Council, uh, like Mass Police Institute down in Groton. We use them quite a bit. Mm -hmm. We're paying their instructors and we're also paying the officers to go there, okay, whether it's on overtime or we're paying them to be there on shift and we have to fill the spot with overtime. But we're paying certified agencies, you know, their instructors that are teaching our, our officers. But not this terror business. No, that and too. That, that's that too. Correct. It's, it's incorporated. They are the trainers yes. of the trainers. Line. Correct. Okay. And how, okay, all right. And uh, how long have the, these folks been doing the terror training? Well, again, how long it's, have it's, the it's, teachers it's, been doing the terror training? Probably yeah. since 9 11, huh? Basically since 9 11, but yeah. uh, given the whole wake of things with Dallas, with San Bernardino and whatnot, the, they're sort of really focusing on this and saying, okay, you know, you have an incident, here's how we're gonna handle it, here's how Dallas did it, here's how San Bernardino did it. Mm -hmm. This is what to look for. And again, it's it's solid, ongoing, verifiable, realistic training. Boy, a lot of decisions have to be made all at once, doesn't Correct. it? Don't they? And they have to be right on right. the spot. And it's not just us, it's fire too. Yeah. Because they're coming into hot zones too. Are you also tested after the training or you just attend the training programs? Usually it's tested through um, not only written tests, but by Doing the uh, the actions, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you also undergo training of, on uh, uh, social behavior, the social groups, different ethnic groups, of course. Uh, culture? You know, like different uh, people coming from different countries, immigrants. They have different cultural habits. D are you trained? Are you are you? Uh, Not only are we trained, I actually attended the train the trainer last year. It's called um, uh, fair and impartial policing. And it was mandated by the Training Council, and we went out, and it was in the wake of all the uh, racial unjust, uh, unjust across the um, country. And we taught the class, Fair and Impartial Policing. I taught it, taught it to North Andover, taught it to Raleigh, and basically went through what we, were, what we learned through. It was the um, Las Vegas Metro Police Department. They did a whole um, study on it, and we taught that. Hmm. So you're made aware to the social habits, which are very different from... Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, the incident that happened in Philadelphia with an uh, yeah. Indian, he, he didn't yeah. know what he was doing, right. but he got, okay, yeah. good. So are you saying that you were teaching the teachers? I actually did that part, yeah. yeah. I see. Okay. I might be asking the same question that Bill might have asked, and I apologize for that. In t a 2017 goal was to implement new and innovative methods, I'm reading the words here, for handling residential and business complaints with marijuana laws. Mm -hmm. And then it's also here on the 2000, that was 2016 goal. 
Now it's in the 2017 or whatever. The point is, have you done anything to implement, or are you still planning out what the strategies are? Two things have happened. In 2016, it wasn't it a ballot question, so we yeah. had to handle it differently. Yeah. And now that it's been a ballot question and a citizen position, it's gone forward. Now we have to find a way to handle it a different way. Okay, so you're still in the strategy lining. The whole like thing is in flux. Okay. It's incredible. And that's what I wanted. To thank you. And then Did you have just sessions. <laughs> May throw a monkey wrench in the whole thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> May all be moot. Yeah. Didn't this I have a question about outside professional services yep. I just noticed that budget line you know as the everyday citizen member of the committee I kind of look through and say wow 212 percent increase what's you know what what's new in outside professional services that accounts so for that we currently have two openings and we anticipate upwards of two to three more openings by the end of the fall we have to pay for uh, a, basically a process to hire new officers okay they so like recruiters through. yep and we uh -huh. have to we have, uh, well, we have no, not, re not recruiters but we have to it's a civil service test, right. but we have to hire. We have to. We have to go through medicals, uh, psychological screening, etc. Ah, and that's and also covered have, under that. We okay. also have a sergeant promotion coming up in the fall too, and that's going to require an assessment center. I'm sorry, what was that again? A sergeant promotion. Ah, oh, okay. In the fall, so that yeah. will require an assessment center. Uh, does this okay. tie into the uh, new operations commander? What we're talking about now. Um, is that a new body that we're adding? We no. added a sergeant was promoted. It wasn't a new body. He just assumed the role of the operations commander. Okay, so it's an operations commander. Did we have one before? That was me. That was it you. Was then, it was then Lieutenant <laughs> oh, Craig. Okay. Huh. We right. have not changed any positions. I noticed that the heads, you know, look yeah. like they were pretty we much the same. Any positions. So okay. it, it's sort of all, um, as we keep talking, is sort of a running theme is. Uh, connectivity and, and cost training among departments and um, it seems to me that a, a larger part of what we're talking about here are, are social issues as well as enforcement issues and sort of you know connecting not just with fire but I'm also wondering about you know, mental health services and, and elderly services and all that. Um, is that you know, is that a role? It seems to be a role that the police are are faced with more and more. Just the way fire is faced with yep. rescue, as much as you know, bring the fire truck out. Right. And uh, you know, I'm wondering whether or not that's a type of position that is. Um, I mean, do we? Does it make sense to have somebody in that role that just does that to help coordinate? We actually have. Um, regional resources that have come in and spoken to our, our offices of roll call mm -hmm. and we have numbers to call on a 24-hour basis if we need them um, again I, I stated the training that mandates from the training council this year it's uh, addiction awareness and it's dealing with Alzheimer's patients and stuff and, and and that's the stuff that you know the officers are learning yeah it's not criminal we're not putting handcuffs on somebody right. but we're right. but we're dealing with social issues well and, and that's, we're what, and that's what I'm wondering putting in the right direction you're getting your whole team your whole Team, right, getting all your officers yep. up to speed, but I really wonder whether or not, um, and here I am advoc almost advocating, but you know, it doesn't make sense to have um, somebody who's really a specialist in that. So right now, I think we're good because of how we're handling things. Like I said, we have those resources, mm -hmm. those entities, Merrimack uh, Valley Mental Health comes to the uh, station a couple times a year and talks to everyone and gives the officers numbers to call, pamphlets to hand out if we need it. Um, the addiction awareness hotline is out there. We're, we're helping people with that okay. quite a bit with the Section 35s. Okay. Um, so I think we're doing well right now, but it's definitely something to keep on the on the on the front burner. Yeah, Do you I'm just think of the low frequency of needing the outside resources right. and advice. Is yeah, I mean, if if you look at some of the rising? statistics from the town right. book, you'll see that our, our overdoses are increasing, much like every other community right. in the Merrimack Valley. At yeah. some point. It becomes yep. cost prohibitive to keep reaching out to outside resources. But also keep in mind, we have 40 first-line social workers. I mean, every police officer, we operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Even if we had a specialist, mm -hmm. that person's restricted to 35, 37 hours. You know, so the fact that we have 40 people out in the street who are first-line social workers, they, they deal with whatever they encounter. Yeah. They're the first ones there. Yeah, I, you know, I just look at it in terms of, you know, the our society changes and shifts and um, I think it, we always want to examine that to provide the best services for mm -hmm. our citizens and, 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 and police and fire and rescue. Everybody oh, has you know, uh, evolved and, and, and developed with that. And uh, I'd like to keep that discussion open because I don't want you to feel handcuffed, if I can right. use that yeah, sure. term, um, <laughs> that you know, they're bound in, kind of as you say, which is, listen, if this is what our town needs or if this is what's going to provide you know, the best response to our citizens, then 
you know, I think uh, I'm speaking a little bit for, for us as a group, and I think we'd all say, hey, if that's the case, make the case for us. Like, like you said, it's creative and innovative ways to handle these problems. That's what and, we're looking for. and it's also as a result of the questions you guys have been asking about training. It's, it's uh, you mm -hmm. know, the more training we do, the more prepared our offices are. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm just going to just put it out right now. I'm very concerned about the heightened interracial tensions uh, that have uh, benighted us all in the last year. Uh, and part of that is that um, if I can get financial about it, uh, which I will, um, if we don't treat someone right, yes. Yes. <coughs> we can get sued. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get sued. Um, neither do I. Okay. And neither do I. <laughs> okay. And not only, uh, that's on the business side and of course on the social side, we have lots of people coming into our community to work here. Mm -hmm. uh, they drive back and forth. Uh, for instance, I live in Edgewood, and folks are in and out of there all the time from Lowell and Methuen and um, uh, Lawrence. Um, I would just hate to have any one of them uh, not treated well. And again, that goes back to training. And I would venture to say, as Chief Gray alluded to earlier, we are one of the best trained departments in, in the entire Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and that's and that's why you don't see those kind of lawsuits here in North Andover. Might it happen? Of course, anything's possible. But is it probable? No. With every training program we run, and our offices um, get exposed to more and more, the the probability becomes less and less. I agree. And North Andover Police has been the, it's it's one of the best. Uh, yes. Uh, yes uh, Thank very you. good. Thank you. I do have a question for you. Uh, uh, any search operation that you uh, conduct, mm -hmm. uh, it involves cost, mm -hmm. right? Wh where does it come from? A search operation? Yeah. For example, a it, missing child? Yeah. We pay that money into NEMLEC. We have those resources available to us, mm -hmm. so that's that blanket cost of, of NEMLEC, that, that amount. Yes. We have resources to call in hundreds of officers we need to, to perform that search operation. So it's, it's very cost, you know, it, 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 it's, it's extremely cost. cost but it, it, yeah. it doesn't seem like it that basically much comes up yeah, that right. the, the cost Pretty amount of the operating budget. So when North Andover offices of five or six respond to another community, mm -hmm. we're paying that overtime. That's all part of the mutual aid agreement. Right. So if, if Andover and Danvers and Burlington and whatever come to North Andover, they pay the overtime costs for their officers. But if our offices go somewhere else, we pay the overtime costs. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, so when you have a search operation, do you, how do you decide what method to use, whether it's canine or thermal imaging or whatever? What it depends what situation arises. Last week we had a situation where it was a missing person. We had a helicopter available. We tried that. We had a canine available. Couldn't locate the person. We called the fire department with extra eyes. They came out and helped us, and we found the person. So is there a defined protocol or procedure? It, or it's just an assessment that you make? It's an assessment on scene by the, by the officer in charge to say, okay, this is what I'm going to use. If it's so there is no defined uh, protocol that if this is what is happening, then this should be done. If this is what is happening, this should be done. It's, it's kind of common sense based. You know, if, if you have no helicopter available, then you can't use it. You have to go with plan B. If you don't have a dog available, you have to go with plan C. Um, it, it depends on what your resources are, what the significance of the, the event is. You know, obviously a missing child is different than a missing 30-year-old person who, ha you know, walked out of the house for a couple hours. It, it's, it changes. It, it's, it's constantly in flux. So, for example, it is, uh, you don't have a helicopter available, but if you think it is important, at that point you would take services from the other town and uh, seek for a helicopter? We could call the state police. Yep, we can call agencies around, like, like Mr. Santilli said, we can call for help from other departments, call the fire department. They've helped us out. Okay. It, it's constantly changing. But there's no defined as such. So if the officer is not trained enough or if the, uh, then he may not make any uh, 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 better assessments and seek for... Uh, yeah, I mean, again, it's dynamic. So if there's someone, someone on scene that sees something, they could ask the sergeant who may ask the lieutenant who may ask, you know, somebody else to say, all right, what do you want to do here? It, it, it really depends. I mean, we've done hundreds of them and, you know, based on each situation is different. So you, you want to get the, the job done as quickly as possible, as safely as possible. I do have a question regarding the budget. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, it's kind of, 
There's, there's we a all lot like of, each other very much. Yeah, you're right. Okay. There's, there's, there's nothing meant by AA, by the way. But when I look at the personnel cost, you have many lines. Mm -hmm. And what I'm looking for is a big picture of your flat line. And one of the largest chunks of increases is in the overtime associated with training and conferences. So I look at that as an uptick. So that would imply to me that you actually have some downsides going on, plus you got some stuff moving around. Can someone give me the big picture of what's going on with the personnel cost? So How did you get there? The big picture is I take a, a snapshot of a calendar year, and the, uh, the system we have that uh, Mr. Bonanno here uses gives us a snapshot of a calendar year as far as court overtime, sick time, vacation time, training time. He takes it, we have a formula we use, and we calculate what we're anticipating in that calendar year, and that gets put in front of you right here. And the personnel costs, the salaries are a little lower because, as, as Chief Gray said, we have two vacancies. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be filling those with bottom tier or you know minimum yeah. minimum uh, police officers as opposed to those who came in at max and may have twenty five you know a master's degree or something of that sort. Okay, yeah. that's what I was looking for. Yeah. Okay. Are, are vacancies uh, patrolmen? Patrol uh, officers. They are. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, they eventually okay. are patrol officers. It's a domino effect. No, I mean, I think that's good to know. And so when we look down the road, when you say the, the relative, we do this with the teach, with the education department, too. We kind of say, like, what's the shape of the workforce? Is there, like, a, you know, a generation of officers who all started at the same time or are going to be retiring in the next few years? Or is it fairly mixed? Is it a fairly mixed age? A fairly mixed no, career group, not no, age. but We're on the younger side. Okay. Because that uh, more seasoned generation, I like to call them seasoned as opposed to older. Right. Don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just one of the things I want to bring up. Uh, I know it got brought up last time with the radios. I brought Mr. Bonanno here to, to answer any questions because I know you may ask the fire department and we brought up with emergency management as far as that capital expense line item. Mm -hmm. You saw that it was kind of increased. Um, is CIP, any CIP's already been approved. CIP, but not the capital expense line. <laughs> right. The capital expense line for the radio right. project, right? No. So if there's any questions, I wanted to make them available. Okay. So you're saying the capital purchases line reflects the radio? Capital that expense. Capital, capital expense. Yes. So it's the line one up from vehicles. Yeah. Yeah, it says capital purchases. Guys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. So that's acceleration. That's phase three, John. Yeah. It's phase three of the um, radio infrastructure project we've been working on for the last three years. Um, it is separate from the capital improvement project that was submitted for portable radios. That's this is a completely this is the actual infrastructure that will support those radios. Okay. This is an, the guts in the car? Or the, um, the, the radios. Is it servers? And yeah, basically it's, it's all of our satellite receiving and transmitting equipment that sits at different sites throughout the town that allows us to actually transmit on the radios itself. It's allowing us to take every piece of radio equipment off of Verizon um, copper lines, mm -hmm. saving the town between police and fire about twenty thousand dollars a year by going on to our own pre-existing fiber right. network that works in town um, the last piece is a uh, microwave link system that will go from the bradford tower location on bradford street the water tower over to whole tail and andover which is a collective effort that we're working on with andover to put up a monopole tower in andover to support some new equipment that we need is this the project that's preventing what happened with the bridge fire under the remember the Verizon yes. wires. Okay, yes. I do yes. remember this. Yeah, All right, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, on fire and we lost. Yes. Yeah, okay. So this is that these, project. By getting off these that. Verizon lines, we won't right. have that. Third we won't have that kind of problem. We have to rely on yeah. in order mm -hmm. to get our services back up. We'll have our own technicians and our own IT people that will be able to fix the problems. And right. we already have our own IT people that could fix them today, or is that part of costs that we will mm -hmm. see in the future? Oh no, that's existing already. It's yeah, the town is already wired with fiber. And that is carried as capital purchase line because, again, it doesn't apply for capital improvement or because it can be paid out of the route. Yes. There you go. Oh, there you go. Right. So that's 132000 How much will be left from that, do you suppose? How long is it going to take to pay that down or use it? You're saying the return on investment? No, no, the, um, uh, using these funds to, to pay for the 
upgrade. How much of the year? It's in hmm? the operating, so it's going to be spent in the operating. In the, It'll it be spent by the end of the year. All of it has to be spent in this year. year. Yeah. And then we can ask. We can ask at the end of the year or next year, I guess, how much is left. Correct. Okay. We did have some other projects in Q that we're going to be doing on the station as well. If there's anything left over, then I can answer those questions next year. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Good. But that's a, because it's in the fiscal operating budget, it must be spent in the 12-month period. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, I would say this, just for full disclosure, it probably would be great if you could add that to this booklet under 2018 goals. Okay. If anybody were ever look at these numbers besides I think, us. I think we put... Um, hmm. You've got phase phase, three is that the radio? phase three? And I literally oh, there it is. That's continue with phase three. That. Okay. Yeah. Could you just that's expand it. on that? Sure. Yeah, th that, yeah, that's a good thing. Had, that was my biggest question. Also for fire or anyone else. Mm -hmm. All yeah. the departments. Sure. Mm -hmm. mm. And even, to be honest, also when I asked about the marijuana, you might want to just phrase it to say you had to shift plans because of the approval by state. Something to the effect, because otherwise you're looking at two years in a row and nothing changed. Yep. And the okay. fact is something substantially changed. Mm -hmm. You have to go back to the... You can do that. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. Great. Good. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Joey. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. There's a new one. Remember that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's kind of scary. It's like bundle of wires. Well, if you look at 17 and 18, right? And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I had been, um, I had okay. Chief McCarthy, we're all yours. So as I was sitting there waiting my turn, I realized uh, one year ago tonight, I was yeah. sitting in this room getting appointed fire yes, chief. So right. You are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, seeing, that the, seeing that the police department took a lot of time, I had a lot of time to think back then. Uh, <laughs> I, I have to say, though, about John Bonanno, um, even though he does work for the police department, he's, he's great value to the fire department also. So uh, the deputy and I often speak with John Bonanno. He is a, a great resource for us. Even though he's he's on the police department payroll, we... Uh, <laughs> so, Cover. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we, we had a, a busy start to uh, last year. Um, obviously, we had the Dow Chemical incident, and then we had a fatal fire. Um, through, the, through the year, the deputy uh, was appointed in November. Um, we also had a, a, a new fire prevention officer in January of 2016, so the whole staff um, that was there prior to us uh, had a lot of years in those positions. So right now the three of us have been there basically um, a little bit over a year. So it's been a great learning experience, uh, but I have to say um, the town has been exceptional to us. We've got a lot of resource from the, from the assistant town manager to the town manager. Um, Lynn Savage has been a great resource. Um, IT, uh, Chris McClure. So we've really come a long way this past year. Um, if you remember last year when I was uh, Deputy Fire Chief, we talked about uh, the tablets that we were um, getting for the uh, fire apparatus. The, the Deputy has been working closely with Chris McClure uh, to get those up and operational. So we're doing things uh, now uh, that we really didn't have the capability uh, of doing before. Um, Depp, you might want to just talk a little bit about the uh, um, inspection program that's been set up and, and, and how we're about doing that. Um, we started using the tablets. Uh, the tablets have the capability of being able to take pictures. Um, meeting with Chris McClure and the new online permitting system and uh, people forms, we've created inspections so the en engine companies can go out and actually inspect businesses make sure everything is up to it's kind of like a down and dirty very quick getting in making sure sprinklers working making sure that um, where the hydrants are whether or not there's um, fire alarm systems working correctly um, things like that egresses um, what we do is we can go out and we can take pictures on the tablets um, we've been using actually Google satellite pictures and overlaying where the hydrants are on property where the sprinkler rooms are in the buildings um, where the standpipes are so when we're going to a call we can pop up all that information onto our tablets. 
prior to arriving so we know exactly where to go what we're looking for because um, mm -hmm. we do have some pretty big complexes Merrimack College for example mm -hmm. um, there's so many different buildings just to be able to know where they are and where everything is inside uh, same with the Sutton Pond condos or Edgewood uh, we have it all lined out um, that's what we started doing uh, we are just as the gentleman was saying earlier we're gonna start doing the online permitting um, I've been working with fire prevention trying to get that up and running um, I know there's some other things that we want to start doing before that, but we're working in that direction. Um, so hopefully that'll be up and running very shortly. Great. So, yeah, that's, I got to say, like, um, you know, just when I look at this document, I look at, like, this is, this is a chance for the fire department to say to the world, this is what we've done over the last year. And um, that's terrific. Like, to be able to say, like, what you just said, if, you know, it doesn't jump off the page, um, you know, in the way you just said it. Like, that's like a fundamental shift in, in kind of firefighting. I mean, well, I, I would mean, imagine that you were, that for years you might have had like a stack of plans somewhere. We had, we had books. Right. We would open up books for maps. Um, we would get information from dispatch. They would have to look it up. This is at the fingertips now. Right. This, it's a long process. Right. No. But, you know... When, when we said we were getting these tablets and we, we're telling the department, we're going to be so much, a year from now, you're not going to recognize what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And um, um, so we, we've come a long way in the IT department. Right. Um, we're continuing with our public education. Again, uh, we've received both the uh, SAFE grant uh, for the schools and the SAFE grant for the uh, uh, seniors. Uh, we've been involved in that since 1996 um, when the first uh, year came out. Uh, so we're continuing doing that. Um, we've actually been meeting with some of our condo uh, associations. We're going to be um, doing some fire education planning in those facilities. And uh, so we're being proactive. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where we are right now. No, that's great. I think, um, yeah, if anything, I, I think we just, Give it's great to see it. Credit. Give yourself, right, yeah, yeah. And put more in there because I think that's um, that's like really great stuff because I can only, I can only imagine well the police department had these yeah and um, you know a lot of fire departments did have them for years we've talked about getting them um, we were actually supposed to finish in our um, third year of our SEBA um, upgrade but we're actually doing that this year we just felt that the um, the computers were so important all our frontline pieces had uh, brand new SEBA so we weren't concerned um, that we weren't going to complete that, so we are going to complete that in the capital of the operating budget this year. Right. But um, we wanted to get those tablets because we felt they uh, they were so important, they were going to be so valuable for us. What stage do you think you're at relative to having 85, 80 percent of the information you want on it? How, how far along are well, you? Well, we have, the information we have, it's in our current um, CAD system. The, the other thing we're doing now, we're, we're going from our existing payment system that we use from computer aiding just that. That's where all our information is right now. That is currently um, being moved into the IMC uh, program. We've already started our training. Police have started their training. The dispatchers have started their training. We're scheduled to go live with the IMC tr um, program. We're looking probably in, sometime in May. Um, so the information's there, but not the way we, we want it. Um, so come so May you'll have a bulk of it? We'll have, it's going to take a while. It's not going to be done in a year. I mean, there's quite a few buildings. It's going to be difficult to, to get in all these buildings, mm -hmm. and not every firefighter gets in them. But we, what we like about it is when one company gets into that building, they can come back. The company that comes on the next day, they weren't on that tour, but they're going to be able to see the photos, they're going to see the information. So if they get that call that night, they might not have been in the building the day before, but the informa information is available to them. Mm -hmm. so. Is that information stored in the cloud? Like, do you have to go online to get that information? or And what's the backup for that? I'm just, and again, this might be a little off budget, but it's kind of. Well, we probably should have had John Bernardo stay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the, the information that we do store there will be there. 
it, it, mm. it is backed up, I believe, in the in the, in the, in the right, cloud. Right. So if somebody had to make a phone call back to the station, they could get the information manually if they had to. Right. If the tablet was down right. or the internet was down. Once the town went Google, uh, mm -hmm. we started using the Google Cloud. So the great thing about it is, is every time I update one of these maps, not know. only does it go into the excuse me, the tablet, but dispatch, I share the folder with them so they have it available. If we're tied up with something, um, with a big mm, incident, cool. they can pull right up the, that folder right up and be able to do it. Mm. If I'm in a building, I've, I can just pick up my, my phone, my department phone, and I can actually pull it up on my phone and be able to walk around and see where it is oh, um, if I don't have the tablet on me. If I understand this correctly, you put here for future goals, next year's goal, transition from CAD to the new CAD IMC system. But it's not just transitioning your ability to use it, but also to catalog information. Well, we, we, we've been able to catalog information in PAMIT. That was done right, since we had that. Right, but now you're going to move it into Now IMC, we're going to so move it. Yeah, it's going to be moved, but it's going to be done by the, the company moves a lot of that yep. information. Yep. Um, but we're going to add to that information, things that we weren't yeah. able to do before. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, so we have migration mm -hmm. and new updated. Right. Got it. Okay. And as part of the training and education budget increase, I see that's 150% increase this year. Is that part of the training to use that? Which one is that? Um, your training and education line has yeah. gone up by 150%. So what that, to, uh, to 37,610? Yeah. Okay, so what that is, is that is when uh, firefighters take college courses. Oh, okay. All right, and mm -hmm. what we did this year, um, in, in, in past years, but uh, we, we wanted to be very accurate about this, is um, we wanted to know who is going to school, how many courses you're taking, what are the costs of the books, because mm -hmm. we need to be able to budget for that. So firefighters are able to go take fire science courses towards mm -hmm. their degree, similar to what the police department does. Okay. We'll reimburse those firefighters after the courses uh, are completed and after passing grades. Mm -hmm. So um, that's just that amount is how many firefighters are planning on attending. So you just club. have more people interested. We have more people in. Well, thing. we have Does a. Does this require training? Yeah. No, it's not required. It, it's basically a, a fire science degree. But to go back to an earlier question that was asked to the police department about whether your force is younger, our fire department's force has become much younger, younger. over the last Wait, four to five years. More training. So we have more younger firefighters you. interested in getting. Uh, uh, you know, sure. going for college college courses, et cetera. So that's that's okay. a factor into why this line item was also increased. I encourage it. I was just going to say, and I encourage education too. So don't please don't take this wrong. What is the benefit to the town with the continued education that they bring more innovative it's methods? A, there, 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 are, there are what you get out of the. I have my degree. Yeah. What you get out of that program, you use daily on your job. Okay. Um, it, it is um, exceptional training on building construction, hazmat incidents engine company operations yeah. um, it just you know for offices is company officer uh, so it, it's well worth it Sounds great. I tell the new firefighters when they come in you get your feet wet get through your training get through the fire academy and then start thinking about college and, and, and is that is local firefighters enrolled in a fire science uh, a, a curriculum a for either an associates or a bachelor's it's mm -hmm. just not taking ad hoc classes yeah right and do yeah, they do that right. locally yeah so um, it's North Shore Community College oh, good. Um, so, yeah. and also the uh, Salem State. Mm. Okay. Is there a, a formula amount for reimbursement or is that a reimbursement at 100 percent? Well, um, associate classes are generally about $600 uh, in fees and then books can be 100 to, and then uh, bachelor's degree programs uh, those fees are generally doubled, like twelve hundred. The, the the contract dictates that the the reimbursement of courses is based on one of the state colleges. I believe it's Salem State or it's something to that mm -hmm. effect. So so Their current you could go to something high, but you're only going to get reimbursed based on the state college rate. Okay, the so state university rate. So somebody goes to now. the to the University of Phoenix for one of these degrees, they're still going to be reimbursed at No, that would be the University of Phoenix. Well, if they did. And, and you have to enroll in, <laughs> in, 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 or, you have to in enroll the in the associate or, or the bachelor or bachelor program. You and just have can't a passing take. rates. Correct. Sure. Yeah. Is this standard across all fire departments in the area that I'll, they get reimbursed? Um, every, every this is part of our collective bargaining agreement. Mm -hmm. Other departments, there's different things. Uh, some departments, um, they get um, a large. It's almost like the uh, police department's Quinville. 
Uh, we don't get that in North Anova. Not to that we, degree. Not to that degree. There is a, um, for a bachelor's degree, is $2,000 a year. It's like a, um, a stipend once you do get your degree. Uh, a bachelor's would be 3000 So a lot of firefighters are not doing it for the money. They're doing it because it's knowledge. It's, it, it makes them a better firefighter. Do you think you can say well, that, yeah. well, my question is really about incentives. So, are we losing good talent to other communities because we're not up, we're not in line with? No, I don't think so. Okay. I mean, we, we we have had people that have left, but we've had people um, also come to our department. Okay. So it's it's you know some sometimes it's not a fit for somebody here. They maybe they move and they want to get closer. They have an opportunity to get to a, a fire department um, closer to where they live. Okay. Um, but again, it's we've had people that have. Transfer it to our department, and we've also had some people that have transferred so off. So we're doing what we need to do. I think so. I think I think once people are here, people um, enjoy working here, not the other. There's there's many people on the on the eligible civil service list. There's people waiting to get yeah. into the job. Yeah. What kind of telephone system you have? You have a twenty-seven Yeah. So what we have is um, obviously we have um, modems on the trucks. Um, for the tablets, uh, there's there's five uh, cell phones. The deputy has a cell phone. Um, the two ambulances are required to have the cell phones, and the trucks have the cell phones. In the event that there's a location that um, they can't get through to the radio, they have to have a uh, cell phone. That, that's not a building telephone system. It's cell phones yeah. and the iPads and the tablets and the modems. And they stay right. with the vehicle. They're not. Uh, the bump? Yeah, why is there an increase? Because more use well, of the, because of the tablets. and the tablets. Yeah. So the yeah. tablets really right. punch, yeah. Okay. Great. You know, one uh, other thing that I, I didn't see in here, but, it, you know, we had a previous discussion. I was just blown away by the numbers. How, you know, we're talking about fire here, but the responsibilities and what you do to support the community includes rescue mm -hmm. services. Mm -hmm. And I, I was just amazed at how many, uh, uh, how much transportation you do and how many calls you get. Yeah, I think, I, I, I do believe it is uh, surprising sometimes to, um, to people uh, on, the, on the amount of calls that we do. Um, 2016, uh, we responded 4,117 times on a variety of, of, of calls. Uh, 21 building fires, that would be some of the buildings with structure or some type of fire in the building. Um, the majority of our business today, like any fire department, is uh, medical. 62% yeah. of what we did last year was medical. Um, but again, um, we have hazardous conditions that we go to, uh, a lot of service calls, uh, which, you know, might not mean a lot to a lot of people, but when somebody's locked out of the house, this is who they call. So oh. we're able to get them in. Um, generally, someone might have a, a window, but they don't have a ladder. So um, we provide a lot of different services for people. Um, Somebody's basement gets flooded. Some basements gets flooded. Um, so, out. At least the, uh, the fire department. Yeah. So whatever yeah. you can think of, we respond to them. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> 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 wow. Oh, so that's, that's who I should have called. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. If we have a vehicle yeah. that's available, we're going to help somebody. Yeah. And it's, it's most of the time, um, it's very easy. A lot of times we'll get calls, somebody left something on the stove. Or somebody locked their child in the house. So it, it obviously it's not just being locked out of the house, but um, you know whatever you can think about motor vehicle. We do about 400 motor vehicle accidents a year. Um, we're seeing less and less injuries because of the way the cars are built today, the airbags, the seat belts. But again, we do have some serious car accidents in town. So um, we you know we, we we have the airport, we have the highway, we have plenty of water. So um, you know. We, we respond to everything in this community. I, I believe we do. I think um, I think we're uh, well prepared. I think um, you know with the the new fire station, uh, it's working well for us. Um, you know we're obviously lo looking at the new apparatus coming in in a few years. So I think the town's been very very good at um, the structures of the fire department, um, providing. Um, 
the equipment we need. And, um, you know, we have, uh, there's a lot of fire departments that come in and visit our station. They don't have what we have. You know, they don't have the um, washer extractor for the gear that's specific for firefighter gear um, that takes out those carcinogenic mm -hmm. after a fire. A lot of them, you know, they either hand wash them or put them in a regular washing machine. We have two sets, one at each station. Um, I think our apparatus has been very good. Uh, our gear um, program is very good. Um, our SEBAs are going to be all updated. Um, again, sometimes is it difficult to respond? There's many, many times um, we're responding to one call and something else comes in. This just happened this past week. We had a, um, a fire in the um, uh, laundromat downtown, and at the same time, Edgewood's fire alarms um, came out. All the units are responding to uh, the fire because it's an occupied building. There's apartments above it, but also Edgewood is a facility, obviously, with a lot of people. Um, I had the DEP take that box, um, but we had mutual aid coming in um, until we could free up some other pieces from what we were doing down on Main Street. So um, sometimes we're taxed during the, 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 the past storm. Uh, we did 84 calls in 24 hours. So, and, but we met every one of those calls. Uh, we were able to get there. Um, so and, and, and I'd like to add that our facility is also the envy of many other fire departments. In the past year alone, we've probably had 10 or so other municipalities who are building a fire station come and want to model their fire station on ours. Mm -hmm. And a couple of them have even hired the same architect so they can get that done. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> we're we're, we we're trying to figure out how to work that for a commission. Yeah. <laughs> It's good, and uh, you know, the, I think you know we've we understand that we changed the way we accounted for overtime, and so it's a little bit simpler. Uh, but it seems to be very well managed, and you know you continue to sort of hit the mark year over year. So you know we we know that doesn't happen without you know effort and attention. Uh, we appreciate we appreciate that uh, you know from the financial standpoint, and as well as appreciating as citizens everything that you do for the town. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's right. My father asked. I know the answer. I think my first year no, actually no, asked I mean, the police chief, "Do you need more bullets? Because the, the budget had dipped." Well, there was a year that there was a year they didn't have. Allegedly. Allegedly. We don't know. I don't yeah. know. Can you do something for that poor yeah. emergency yeah. management yeah. services? <laughs> What do you so want to put I get up? this up on the screen, the Google Docs, so I can show everybody how to open it and get to it. If not, we'll just. Uh, sure. I can do that. Yeah. Uh, I asked for the HDMI, and I didn't bring one. We need to do some genres in here. Well, unless you want to all come around. No, no. <laughs> I, had, I, I found the HDMI cord before, and I plugged it in. Okay, I'll just. I could open that Google Doc. Can you That's okay. No. Oh, your ears in there, doing well. <laughs> <laughs> <There's a word>. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear us now? Sorry. It's <laughs> 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 okay. I'm not touching any more furniture. When I get, when I get a call from Brian Frazier tomorrow asking what happened to his volunteer. Yeah, I get that. Brian knows right now. Does this come under other related duties? I think they're trying to show go on the TV screen. Yeah. Did, uh, is this being televised? How does this go on? It is. Okay. You can get up off the floor now. It's all set. So, I don't know. It's been awesome. You have to turn the TV on, don't you? What did I do? 
I, I am computer uh, challenged, so I wouldn't be able to tell you. I plugged it in, and that's what made the noise. Can I plug it back in again, or is that going to? Wait till it's easier. Okay. Yeah. We have to call the chief. Computer challenge. <laughs> 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 it's called. It's going to be 99911. Nine, 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 one, one. So, Bill, can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Turn off your audio. get to the warrant letter, which is the, I would call it the cover letter that's going to go into the town meeting booklets. Mm -hmm. um, let me review the sections while Bill's pulling it up, which will be more pleasant is that experience. Is document on there? Yes, we're going to show you how to get to the document, and I believe I put the, I haven't done it in a while. No, I put it up there. I put it up there three weeks ago. No, I took a draft, the last year's letter, save as, yep. Um, we ahead. should, and so I want to show you where it is, so at least in the next week, if you go in and you can't get in, I, I would like you all to go in and make sure you can go in and edit. That would be great. Um, will, will we each have a, a, a color? Um, how, how, can we see each other's edits? We can see each other's edits. We can put, well, there's two things. Number one, you each have, we each have a section, and I believe I put people's names yeah. in there, which section is yours, okay? But you're saying, like, to see changes? Yeah. I think the first, my opinion is the first run, we should not have to see each other's changes. We are changing the information from last year, so let's not track changes until we get to a. <laughs> it was changed 25 minutes ago. Yeah. We're a little bit behind there, Bill. Uh, um, oh, okay, so, so then. Maybe we'll track changes after the first draft is we're done. We're only going to do our assigned That's sections, correct. And if we see some sort of typo or something, in somebody else's section. We'll get time. to it. We're not going to. Not right now. That. Not right now. Okay. I think we'll stick in. Yes. Oh, gosh. I was going to hmm? say, how many people? I missed that meeting. Yes, right. So let me tell you the sections and let me go through them while he's pulling this up. You know Sorry, Bill, to do this uh, on you. Mine in, Bill? Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> what? Well, you yeah, could put my. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. My computer. Yeah, yeah why don't you come over? TH. TSCH. Yeah, he's got his. C CSCH. Close. Mm -hmm. Back up. Back, 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 back. Somebody just turn the name plate around. Let's just. CH. IR. Fleet. Comment Chris. A. Uh, can I back, 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 back? <laughs> 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 Why didn't you just type it, Tim? <laughs> Thank you. Like I said, you could have just turned the name plate around. <laughs> yeah, that's, we're really forgetting that our name's <laughs> right here. <laughs> um, <laughs> So let me say this verbally, and then we'll go through this again. We got through that many times. Yes, the intro. It reminds me of doing mm -hmm. our letter. You know, oh, we're sitting around the computer and <laughs> trying to figure it out. And by the way, this letter you might ask the question I asked last year, and I got a response to. This letter is very comprehensive. It has been a format has been put in place that seems to work and is um, easier to follow. So the idea of shortening even more. Last year, what we added was a little more visual graphics. I think we tried to go a little bit more visual and less text. Yeah. But it's hard to do that without the text. So, because I found it to be overwhelming. Uh, you need to sign out. No, you need to sign out. Go under Would you let? <laughs> this kills me. Did I just put it in the wrong port? And that's why my computer works in HDMI all the time. Go on. <laughs> bye bye. Murmur, murmur. <laughs> How many finance committee members did it take to solve <laughs> <laughs> the light bulb question, right? More than Even though we ask great technology oriented questions, we clearly can't. <laughs> 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 
Okay. When you go to the drive, go to 2018, if you don't mind. Oh, you have icons. Okay, so mine's in list format. You have yours in... Can you get to... Um, yeah, the, where the folder says FinCom, go all the way back. No, 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 no. Um, oh, because it's the latest? Sorry, yeah, yeah, that's it. But they're, they're not going to get there that way, so can we give them the way they're going to get there? Okay. Okay, let's start at the FinCom folder. Let's start there. Okay, so when you go to the FinCom folder, you're going to go to FY18. When you go to FY18, there's a 2018 FinCom warrant letter. It's the fourth item down with the blue. Right? Yeah. It was the same one you just clicked on, but they're not going to see it that way. Okay? So all I did was I took last year's, and then I put names in the sections that I believe we discussed. Sasha, you're under education, school budget, by the way, to answer your question. Okay? So let's just make sure that we did this right. So intro and process is bill and purpose, and then I thought, Bill, no, we didn't ever decide who was, you said you were doing process because it's just a copy. Right. And then big picture stats is Chris. So I, I figured that meant budget overview. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Keep going. Collective bargaining. I have Karen and David is going to work with you, like learn off of you and work with you on that. Uh, yeah, we were going to do that like you're going to do it. Sasha, right? The school? Exactly. Okay. Yep. Uh, but I think it's more in the collective. It is. Keep going. Okay, yep. There's, there's a couple sections okay, that you're on. Yep. That wasn't the only one. Yeah, that's the one. Reserve is Liz. Is that still yeah. okay? All right. Keep going. And I don't know if I got the latest one, guys. So just SIP is Tom. Yep. Tom, right? Okay. And this is where I got confused. We have you well, down for enter. I'm always confused. For enterprise funds, I have you down. That's the only section I have you down for. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Water, sewer. I didn't know who to put. That's enterprise that's funds. Thank that's you. That's so that's those go to Tim. Right. Okay. That's so that's you. Stevens is you. Okay. And then we're school. Okay. Okay. We need more visuals. Um, and then Bill's going to do the wrap up. Is that? I think that, oh, and I did ask you for the list of retirees because we were going to acknowledge who retired. Did you, did you get that from? I got part of it, but not all of it yet. So I will make a note of sending. Because I answered you, but directed you CC. Yeah, to somebody else. Thank you. Exactly. Yep. So I'll have to copy those in. So I have to do two things. I have to add, Tim, your name to Water, Sewer. Stevenson. And Stevenson. Stevens. And Stevens, sorry. Stevens. And then I have to copy Darby's list into conclusion so to help you build. All right, let me see what I had. What yeah, we, we had are. We had. Five significant increases and decreases. Karen is going to do that. Yeah, five, 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 five. I think Bill blew right by it. What? Can you go back? No, I didn't see it. I think it was way up, or I didn't, I didn't make it red. Go. Oh. No, you know what? I think we we melded it, we melded it together year. to the budget overview. That's so right. those two things kind of went. So you can see the budget overview. So maybe you could work with Chris, like, so he's not alone on the big picture stats slash. Yeah. Because yeah. it's all one. I mean, Sasha will be more like my set of, second set of eyes and critique me and then vice versa. Well, well, everybody has an like, assistant except for us. We don't yeah, need what, one. What's wrong with you guys? <laughs> we don't need one. <laughs> 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 you don't have an assistant. <laughs> <laughs> but I called him and go, did I do this right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's, but again, question, and does that, we went through that quickly. You want to go back out to the folder, or does everybody know how to get in? Well, there's two know? folders I noticed. I found this with, with the with the bill in red. Yes. Okay. Right. On here. Yeah. Um, and and it said that if I made changes to that. Oh, let's talk about how to make changes. Yes. If okay. I made changes to that. Yes. And then quit out, then the the changed document would be carried over to another folder. 
Can you make one change, please? Yeah, and let's see the prompt that goes at the this top. This other okay. folder is oh, not the correct. Add Tim's name to the enterprise fund. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <no. laughs> so Just Tim. That? That's so nice of you to do my homework. So Just don't bother the question. Okay. Okay, there you go. I changed. Okay, so okay. see how it says all changes saved in Drive? Yes. Yeah. So can you X but out of this? Not drive. <laughs> no, that Google is drive. drive is yeah. the place this yeah. all resides. Yeah. So yeah. what it does is it sit. It should now sit. Save. Just put text. So he's removing it again, saving all changes saved in Drive. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Um, Can you close out of it to show them how to exit out? Well, no. I mean, the only question I had is there. Is there uh, an option to Red line. track changes? Yeah, but we just discussed that. Because this is going to be our first draft, yeah. and we're, we're changing not old data to new, there's no point in tracking until after we get the first right. draft done. Okay. Otherwise, this will look So just go ahead and do the, the first one without Yeah, but any can you show them how to exit? Because I think that's, that's important. I mean, that's what I had to learn. Is this you're going to show us how to track changes in this thing? Oh, we yeah, can do that I later. Guess. OK, so we'll first. first draft, we should just do it here. First draft, we'll do it in here for, um, and I think the date we, I think the date we set. Yeah, when, when do we? Do we do it now? Okay, so April 3rd, we're meeting. These are public hearings. This is public hearing, we have another meeting after that. So I think actually April 3rd, we should, we should have, have the first draft, draft done. And then we have April 11th, to finalize, yep. so by April 3rd we should have it done, so we can give it a first read and start to edit, and then April, and then April um, 11th, finish it. You can finish it, and then we always. I think we already. If we didn't already, we usually have reserved an extra meeting in case we get stuck. Right. Yeah. But we haven't. Need, we didn't need it last year. I think we needed it two years ago, but. Last year, I think we did one draft and one review. Just keep in mind, after April 11th, you don't have that much time to finish up. Right. We, we know we're going to be it in. Print. Before we have to go to the printer's yeah. print, right. it has to yeah. be distributed by April 21st. Right. So oh, we always backed up to the, line? we always backed it up to oh, wow. April 13th. He told us April 15th was the mm -hmm. deadline. And April 13th is the Thursday, so right. the 14th would be the Friday. Right. I think that was when we started. Yeah. So that's what we, that's, that's how right we backed into it. Break. That's how we backed into it. We knew we. We knew we had to get it done by the 15th, so we backed we backed, we made enough uh, meetings. Can to get you it close done. the schedule for one second so I can show them how to X out? Okay. All you need to do when you make a change right now, guys, is go up to the top tab in your internet browser. Go like Where? here, like okay. right here. Just click on that X yeah. and just click that little X, and that's it. Okay. Right. It's no file exit or anything else. And we don't have to share it. Nope. You're all sh you're all on it. Yeah. That's what okay. I do want you to double check, but okay. That's clearly I made a few mistakes. Yeah. Can I make a recommendation? So if our meetings April third, can we have everyone's piece of the drafts completed by that Sunday? So then that Monday night or whatever on Monday everyone can take a look, read them, make their own comments on a hard copy or whatever, and then we can come prepared because we're already gonna have a public hearing to start. So we're gonna be starting a little bit later. Yeah. And if you know people aren't prepared to start that conversation, it's gonna be wait a waste of everyone's so time. So basically by Sunday no, no. Done. that April third is a Monday. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah. That's okay. So, yeah. so, so if we're so done Sunday, by if we're yeah. done afternoon. by Sunday, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So April second. Yeah. Complete, and then everyone can take a look before the meeting that mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of what is the the process for this typically, so. Being a first year member, what do you do that day? Who yeah. kind of takes ownership over yeah. the the editing, the typing? Is it a group effort? What's most efficient? so what we what we normally do is everybody does their piece, and then what? Um, and I think right now, I mean, it's late, and I'm I don't know if I'm going to say this right, but basically, I think right now all the all the tenses are right. So I would read the whole thing first, and just to figure out how we talk about. The committee, I think we would usually refer to it as, you know, the committee. And we use we, we use sec second person. Okay. So, um, you know, kind of read through and make sure you follow the same that you're following the same the sort of visual text. First. Right. So to work out the, the, kinks. the bigger kinks. So it's getting a little more 
plugged in, and that's yeah. kind of also the design of it, so that your your people can look at this and go, okay, Compare. I can and, see it's following and the I'm, same. I'll yeah. speak for myself, but I depend on others here, certain people that are very detail oriented, to say I think you might have not gotten this right, or you didn't phrase it right, or whatnot. Right. Like you you just see yeah, so we. So, and, and to go back, so we all write our own section. You know, we write our own section, we read through. Um, we have in the past sort of designated, I think what we did last time was, everyone did their own section. We had a meeting where we talk, when we have the first meeting and we review the letter, we'll talk, that's where we'll talk like emphasis. Like, is, you know, that's where we make sort of the choices about how we're expressing ourselves. That's really not an editing meeting, that's really like a content meeting, you know? So that's not a copy edit meeting, that's a content meeting. So we do that, and that, so say we do that on the third. We read through, we do the content. Like, mm -hmm. do we, you know? Do we put this graph in versus another graph? Do we make this point more? Right. right. Or, or do we, we want to represent repeating. as a committee? Yeah, are we Sorry. repeating are we anything? Are we getting all the right stuff in there? Yeah, so you just yeah. have to be open for yeah. lots of corrections. We do that, and then usually after that First. meeting, we'll assign somebody to go through and say, copy edit the document yeah. just for readability continuity. and continuity and so forth and pick up all those things. And then we get back on the 11th and that's when we sort of do the copy edit, do the like group edit on things and come up with the final, come up with the final polish. All that's done know. in one meeting on the 11th? No. Yeah, so on the third, on the third we'll do that. done in between the two times. It, yeah. it happens. It really can happen. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the first time it, it really must happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, this is the third run. So last year was my first run in it, but the format is there. It's not. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can we get it done? Concerned. Yeah. 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 So, Karen, nice. are you doing separately and then working together? Or I have, like, yes. I, I, I did prepare mine. And when, uh, I'd like you to take a look at the collective bargaining contract. Uh, they're all online on the, um, on the um, public website. Some of them are up for renegotiation uh, next year. Uh, some of them a uh, the year after. I would like, uh, I suggest that, that you, uh, you can either do this in chart form, uh, so it might be carried forward for other years. But you look at those uh, uh, date times for renegotiation. And if there's something in the contract, what there should be, um, and there should be this information elsewhere too, what the percentage increases are over those years. Like if you've got a three-year contract, this calls for an increase in the first, this X percentage this year, Y percentage next year, blah, okay? Uh, that, that type of thing. And then uh, one of the, you might, you might just, um, I'd like you to look also, instead of the, is this fair game? Uh, can we look at the... Uh, it's all public record. Okay. I'd like you to look at the, um, at the chiefs. The, the chiefs have their own agreement with the town. Fire chief. The fire chiefs. The police chief. chief. The... Town manager, that's it. Mm -hmm. Those are the only three contracts oh, that are three. outside. Okay. Um, uh, you can um, uh, look at the... Uh, there's something, a lieutenant's, there's a lieutenant's. Well, that's, that's one of the collective bargaining agreements. Yeah. Yeah. The, the other ones in play? The only, the con right, the only contracts yeah. other than the collective bargaining agreements are town manager, police chief, fire chief, that's okay. it. All right, well, I, it, I, I've just got a technicality going on. The, okay. the, um, the lieutenants. Have their own union. They have their own union. Yeah. Yes, with a union contract. It's, uh, that's what it's called. Called the collective bargaining agreement with the North Andover Police Lieutenants Association, which is consists of two people. Two people. Okay. So you have a union of two people for those lieutenants, and and it that's what the contract is, and the name of the contract is um, refers to, to. You might need to let her look at the documents. Yes. Yeah. And then yeah. come to you for tutorial. Oh, okay, but just, I mean, you're dealing with a different legal creature uh, on those lieutenant things, and we'll talk about that, but if you do that, okay? If, if, if I may, if you go to the town's website, and on the left side, click documents, blah, 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 the collective bargaining agreements with unions are grouped together 
and then the individual employment agreements are grouped together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the employ and the union contracts are both municipal and school. I mean, you can look at the section of the letter to get an idea of what's been communicated in the past. Sure. And because you're on this drive, you, this is this year's letter, but you can go back to other years and find the last two years' letters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you go back really One year. Just yeah, a year. Okay. Okay. Two thousand and seventeen. Because, 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 because before that, four sixteen. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay, anything else on the letter? So normally, you know, you, know, you can certainly talk and do work product online with, with two people. That's not, an open, that's not an open meeting law violation. That's fine to do. We'll have an open meeting where we, where we go over the final draft, so nothing's a sort of secret, but that's just not, it's a, we don't have to worry about it there. Mm -hmm. um, we had, so we knocked that off. And then, in terms of questions and clarifications about any terms or concepts in the budget, is there anything? Some came up over email, so I wanted to just take a, take the chance. You mentioned open, right? And is there a section in our letter that addresses that topic? It'll be in like challenges. I will definitely be. You're addressing covering it. that. Part, yeah, right? and then it's in reserves. Because mm -hmm. I wanted you know. You yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And then, are there any questions, informational questions that we want to put out in preparation for our budget deliberations before the April 3rd meeting? Because on the, in the April 3rd meeting we're going to do, we'll have the public hearing, which normally goes pretty quickly. Anybody has questions, you well, know, we'll have those well, questions. I know I requested across email, you we were all on it, right. for the actual versus budgeted for multiple years. Yeah. So I'm going to ask. To get that summary? I don't have that yet. Okay. I haven't asked for it, but I will. I'll talk to Lynn and, okay. and kind of get it. Had, I'm sorry. So we'll get that. We'll have that for the third. All it, oh, mm -hmm. No, it's not thought. I just hope everybody understood what I was asking across, across email. Mm -hmm. The only thing I'd like to see is an update and maybe a little more discussion on the school department's sped budget and the okay. sped reserve because candidly. It's being used, the spend reserve is being used as a budget. Yes. And yeah. after yeah. one more year, it's gone. Yeah. The way it's going right now. You're going to spend half of it in the coming year, and that leaves half of it left the, the way the current trend goes. That spend reserve, which requires a special town meeting, is going to be gone. And I think that we have a policy though that says that they can only use so much before it gets refunded. Okay. Right. 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 And, they could, and they could only use so much in a two-year period. Yeah. Two yep. years. So they can't burn it down. So let's have a discussion at least. Bring, bring it back. So you may, you may want to reference yeah. the uh, SPED reserve policy. Well, cool. yep. yeah. So John and I can look at that too as part of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but I, I, do you want to be here or do you want like just us internally? I'd like to have a SPED update. Yeah. Well, no. So we time. we have we got we got the report and it looks like it's about one hundred and thirty-five thousand over what that that was the number that I, I'll ask Jim for it again because he does it every month. So we'll have it as of end of March. So so in terms of information requests, we'll ask for kind of year-to-date budgets. We'll ask for the SPED okay. school department budget update that he produces normally. I, I don't think he needs to come here. No, because we're familiar sure. with the and format, you know, we can just. Then we we'll just go it, over the reserve. Policy. There will be a special town meeting within, within the town meeting. That I know. Reserve. That I know. Yep. Again. Yep. But again, I mean, the problem still remains that it keeps if they're spending it, they're spending it. Whether they can take it out of that, you know, whether there's right. restrictions on the reserve, the money has to come from somewhere. So right. the problem is still there. Yes. Right. Isn't it That's that we need to raise the reserves? Okay. Well, I think that goes to, you know, again, what I was going to say is when we have this meeting next week. April 3rd. Yeah, the next meeting, sorry, April 3rd. When we have the meeting on April 3rd, we're going to go through and we're going to vote on all the line items like we've done. So basically, you know, so sometimes I've had the warrant letter, the warrant materials will be coming out. I don't know exactly when, but sometimes we've had the warrant materials that early. Really the draft. The draft. Yeah. No, and the they said, oh, do you want to vote on that? What we've normally done, and I can talk to, we can put it together like we did last year, was we just put the line items together, you know, in the big categories, and we I voted on those I amounts. I don't know when you're planning on doing it, but your, your 
recommend your your vote or your recommendation on each of the financial articles has to probably be done by the April 11th meeting right. so that it can be included in the warrant. Right, right. But what I'm saying is, regardless, we've done this in two steps. So we've done it as a two-step process, and it has a lot to do with the timing of the warrant right, letter. Right, because, and when because we you, you, would get all, you would get the draft of all the financial articles so that you can vote on favorable, right. non-favorable recommendation to be right. made at town meeting, et cetera. But so on the, what we've normally done on the operating budget side, what we've done the past two years in a row is we've actually put together a document with the line items for general those, government, those all, the different, yeah. all the different categories. We voted that sort of at once to say, okay, in terms of the budget, we finished our review of the, these budget, and here are our recommendations on the budget. Right. And then the financial articles in the warrant, you know, for example... You and know, it's actually one in the that's one in the same because that is the way the the operating budget is 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 the article right with those right. categories. With those, yeah. Well, we have that a draft in front of us by the third. Yeah, and that's then, easy to that's yeah. easy to prepare because it's it's basically it's what, what we, we have. have all the financial articles. Exactly. Yes, yeah. it's what we have. Yeah, yeah but, all the financial articles are already in place. Yeah. Right, but then we need the language and all the other ones because some of the financial articles, you know, then we'll get all the language on the other ones, which we'll vote. On the eleventh, because we usually like to, we like to have a right, some like time. The contracts that in excess of three years, you have a recommendation. Yeah, a lot of them are et cetera, really right? pro forma. But yeah. then there are the other ones where we get asked to weigh in, like on the citizen petition on yeah, marijuana. We haven't covered or reviewed, and we can, you know, can see if anyone wants to come. We haven't had a presentation before the board of selectmen, so really. Yeah. Well, yeah, it. it <laughs> So I haven't seen the language, but yeah. I haven't seen the language, but I've actually three and uh, for that case there are three different citizen petition articles for that particular project. Really? Yeah. And some of them have to do with sort of you know, how much how much money what the host fee they would give. Well, there's government. there's one that's um um authorizing the town manager and the board of selectmen to enter into a host community agreement kind of right. thing. So it does, there's no dollar figure attached. It's it's a generic kind of wording. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. right. Okay. So, but some of those come up that have yep. financial implications. And so we'll, we'll do that on the 11th, on the 11th when we'll, we'll, finish, we'll finish on the Warren articles, favorable action, mm -hmm. or et cetera. So on the third, we'll do everything we reviewed on the operating side. We've already done the SIP. The public hearing. And then uh, we'll on the 11th, you can do all the your On the 11th, we'll do the letter in the Warren articles. Where does the CPC come up? I got a call John. It's, it, I had to ask the question. It's a, it's just, right. <laughs> no, I mean. Well, there we go again. John, you know. We're, we're anticipating April 3rd, I believe, okay. for the selectmen. And, and what does CPC for the stand for again? The Community Preservation Committee. Who oversees the Community well, Preservation, Preservation Act funds. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, so as we're meeting, they will be meeting. Third. Yes. Right. Yes. A, and, the, and where are we going to be meeting in this? Board I believe you're meeting here because the selectmen oh, are meeting that meeting. evening. Yeah. Cool. Can he just pop, dip in, get in his little car and come over here and give? Us we could. A sheet we of could paper? ask him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. That he's using to, you know, with what, the, on the third? selectmen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a piece of the action. Right. The, 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 Unless you bring him in on the 11th because he's an article, because right. they haven't voted yet. The well, committee we itself hasn't voted. The committee has a, their meeting is in next week. next next Wednesday, the 29th. Okay. All right. Yeah. So can't we just get in advance of the information? <laughs> <laughs> if we want you would to. No, that's before April 3rd meeting. Right. So I'll reach out. Well, I'll right. reach Once out to John on again. The 29th, you'll know yeah, what projects they're voting for. for correct. Right. 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 Yeah. We don't. We don't know either. I mean, we know what the projects are that were proposed, but we don't know what they're voting. Right. Okay, so that's another one on there. Um, you have all this follow up. Yep, that we, Angela. I'll um, I'll send another email and I'll copy you and I'll copy the town manager that we request the CPC come to the third or the eleventh, and that they provide any documentation prior to that. So I'll I'll send that in the morning. So we're all set there. Hopefully, we get um, it on the thirtieth too. <laughs> since yeah. that's when our agenda goes out. Yeah. So we can do that. Yes. Okay. Do you need any motions, dear? Anything else? No. We don't need any motions. We have uh, minutes. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, we have to approve two sets of two minutes. Two sets of okay, minutes. Okay, we cannot. February 15th is 7.28. Okay. Um, so do we have a motion relative to the February 15th meeting minutes? All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. I have a motion to approve the minutes for February 28th. And we have a motion. Yes. We have a motion. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So we're all set. Meeting, the minutes go much faster when we do them at the end. Yeah. Okay, do we have any further motions? I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Great.